I wasn't quite ready for it, but there was a little works car there with a load of rail for uh, putting in the ground somewhere. And of course the red flag's hanging off the long piece of rail out the back. I must have had to go around the loop and come back to uh, do the left hand turn. Well, if all goes well, I'm going to have a little bit of fun here. We'll see what eventuates. In case you're wondering what the tracks in the foreground are, this is the location where the electric logo shunt the goods wagons, as seen on the tape last year, so there wasn't any point in taking any more. Uh, yesterday I was supposed to have done a trip with the driving school, but it sounds like the tram blew up, so They've got just a regular car today without trailers, so uh, I better get ready and see what happens. The students here have 30 days of training without passengers, and then 18 more with passengers. Uh, got an interesting collection coming up now. There's uh, one works car with a modern car in tow, and uh, I just noticed the same pull up behind it, so. Looks like we get our traffic lights and we'll see what comes past. A moment ago the student had to make a, an emergency stop. I'm not sure my German's good enough to understand why they were doing that, but we'll try perhaps in a minute. On the same. The teacher on the right, the student on on the left, and he's got a book that seems to have all the plans of the looks yes, like junctions and terminuses and things yes, there. As part of the training, they cover the entire system. It just takes six weeks, I think, to do that. And uh, obviously, there's been points clarified along the way of the place we've been. I've driven for the last couple of miles I suppose. It, uh, it sure makes Melbourne look like a boring system. You're going along and uh, little loops here and round through back alleys there. At the moment I think this is uh, sort of a terminus loop. We came from a street on the left. You might be able to see the tracks coming round from where that truck just went and it's double track here but I suspect that uh, uh, it's a double terminus which means that if another tram comes it can overtake us and keep going. Yes well it's got one of those horrible steering wheel controllers but a um, bit hard to describe the controller it's it's sort of stiff like a bad Clyde but the notches are very close together. Uh, you'd probably get used to it I suppose uh, sort of start to get used to it where full series was. Uh, I think he said it's got 18 steps of acceleration. Normally these cars pull trailers so you need fairly fine steps uh, and 12 notches of braking and a few times I did get a couple of notches together which meant rather sudden deceleration. Uh, I don't know if you can see the pedals. Uh, no I don't think so. Well, oh, maybe. There's two together there on the on the left, and you normally put your feet on both of them. The le extreme left is sand, the one next to it is the track brake, and the right pedal is for the gong. Changing the points, uh, you can either do it the power on, power off method, or if you're rolling on a bit of flat country or a hill, the left hand of those two buttons uh, is a dummy load for the automatic points. Um, no matter whether it's a straight or a curve, if you're going right, 
the right direction is with power and similarly the left is always coasting no matter whether you're going around a curve or whether it's straight so power for the right and coast for the left as you can see another route just goes past the end of here um, we were hoping to go out to the museum where Peter and I were the other day however there's track work somewhere along the way and we can't get through uh, the rever reverse is a bit of an odd looking thing I suppose to us I'll get some focus um, it's off at the moment which is nowhere near centre and to the left is backwards both motors then comes forwards both motors and then forwards with number one motor and forwards with number two motor so that also gives you your motor cutout switches I guess it also means that if you blow a motor you can't go in reverse but then uh, you don't have to go in reverse anyway really because uh, it's a system for single ended trams so you just keep going forwards all the time I haven't quite got to the bottom of all the other little buttons and things on the control panel uh, that handle with the stem pointing towards me is the blinkers and uh, they're, they're sort of back to front to how I said if we want to turn right you actually turn the knob so that the arm points to the right in other words uh, yeah I'll show you that's right flashes and that's left flashes anyway um, the bottom right hand ones to ring the bell uh, the bell to um, the warning bell for the doors and the next one is to release the doors so the passengers can open them by hand um, if there's anything else important I'll let you know when I work out what they are one handy little thing they've got is on the side there <coughs> excuse me is a hand windscreen wiper which seems a bit odd to you to realise that the mirror's out there and uh, many a time on a B-class it'd be handy if you had a windscreen wiper that would uh, clear the windscreen for your uh, mirror it looks like the instructions over for the moment so uh, we're ready to proceed a bit further too bad if you didn't get along with your student and you had to put up with him for six weeks wouldn't it the student has a track plan of the Berlin system and is doing sort of a quiz whereby he's putting the uh, route numbers on the map against the terminals in other words sort of a blank map oh, it's got the names of the terminuses but not the route numbers and uh, he's going through putting the route numbers on it, the appropriate terminuses he's been a student for two weeks now and that means he's still got four weeks to go with the one instructor and in his first three days in service he has this same instructor with him and then he does the rest of his training with what we'd call it just a driver trainer similar to the standard that uh, we've got in Melbourne but one thing about being an instructor here is that uh, they have to go through a proving course in, in other words they're tested out once more again before they're made instructors to make sure they're doing things right in other words get rid of the bad habits if only Melbourne yeah. probably not a good view but as you can probably see it's quite a big network um, no single routes necessarily enormously long many of them act as feeders to uh, underground stations and the S-Bahn and so on that uh, you will nevertheless find trams a long long way out from the city like travel 40 minutes or so by suburban train and then get it on, tr on a tram and go for another 20 or 30 minutes or so das mm -hmm. und uh, für gehen es gibt ein Drucker unter die hier? ja ein, einmal zum uh, anfangen ja genau oh.
Das ist ein genau. Genau. Funnily enough, this is the Route 71 I came to see yesterday. Interesting morning, learning procedures and so on. Quite a number of emergency stops have been made and you can probably hear the flats that um, we have now. Um, there are different types of emergency stops made in different situations. Um, the last one he made was in case of a controller fire, whereby he used the track brakes, sand, the handbrake which is that lever there and at the end of that he had to pull down the pantograph and turn off the battery. Um, I don't know what the stop was that he had to make when the flats developed but the tram slid for some distance and I expected there'd be flats as soon as we'd stop. Um, earlier other stops had been made using um, full dynamic brake which is the controller beyond off and also the track brake at the same time that stop didn't produce flats so I'm not sure what did produce it but, uh, it was a particular type of flat and every now and then the instructor calls out a, a certain uh, type of stop being required and uh, it's then up to the driver to spring to attention and stop the tram by the required method Oops, I wasn't holding on then um, I'm doing a left turn. That's sort of a grand tour of the system really, bit by bit. We're up in the north, we're at least 15 kilometres away from Kerpenick Depot where this fellow will be placed. And uh, I've had a few little drives here and there. Um, the last stretch was done by the student because it'll probably be his one and only trip over that line as a student and pro quite possibly he'll never drive it again. So uh, uh, obviously he had to drive it and not me. Other lines where he will go more often, um, that's when I've been having the occasional trip uh, drive myself. But, uh, I'm quite impressed with the thoroughness of their training system and you just come to see how hopeless Melbourne's one is by comparison. But, uh, just coming on beside uh, another emergency. And a few words of explanation. And the bumps over the sand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's about it for the moment anyway. I don't know what that particular... Oh, that, that was an uh, emergency signal from a passenger, that one. Um, It did stop that time, believe me. <laughs> that, that was the hardest stop we had so far. Certainly worked well. Anyway, I'll put the camera down before I go on the floor in a heap. And uh, show you some more later. We've come to this depot somewhere in the Punko area. Uh, most of the depot seems to be uh, four-wheelers. Also, there's nearly four roads of... Uh, old stuff here that uh, museum group which the driving instructor fellow is a member of is uh, helping to restore.
Sounds like a wheel grinder. Bit hard to see him in the gloom, but um, no. There's uh, one of the locos. That track comes out and goes directly onto the railway without a connection. But I know that there is a connection between the railway and the tramway because once part of the tram line was closed for reconstruction they used the railway to get the trams from one part of the system to the other but not with passengers. From the street that's the track for the locos coming out of the shed and you can see a set of points there, a bit rusty looking and that's the connection onto the tram line. But, uh, apparently the little green four wheelers are sometimes used for some form of goods transport but the finer points I'm afraid are lost in the translation. Yeah my ears weren't playing tricks. That is in fact a grinder up there. Yeah. Uh, looks like they're only grinding one wheel. It is capable of grinding both wheels at once but uh, Presumably they'd already finished the left-hand wheel. Anyway, we've got more things to see today, so we'll head on a bit. electric locos and some diesels as well shunt various sidings into factories along this street and with considerable cooperation from the tramways because one road in the depot is for the locos they were down there for a fair while we walked up in the meantime the last they're coming they're Romanian built there's also a blue diesel loco a little bit further up, half out of a siding. Six hundred volts, and they share the same span wires as the trams. The second loco is dead attached. See the blue diesel on the left. I think so they might be going to work here. It's certainly got to be unusual scenery for a shopping street. The line actually went past a few uh, shops a little further back, but this side of the street's all shopping. And dash up the street brings us to an intersection with another tram line at right angles more or less.
the same location, that's where the uh, railway crosses the tramway. Locos come back for some wag with some wagons. Same location. I guess it's also almost a diesel tram. Looking back in history, it seems that um, Berlin and some of its neighbours fiddled around with um, petrol trams in the early days as a way to overcome problems with unsightly overhead wires in the street.